one giving you money expects, if I give you a dollar, I expect, you know, $1.2 or $2 back. So that person is not, we think the person is investing in the business, but most times they're investing in you. Uh -huh. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to the Smarter Tomorrow podcast. I'm very happy to have you here. As usual, I'm your host, Susan Wanjiku. Today's episode is all about business and the journey of entrepreneurship, the challenges, and all the exciting things that you need to learn or hear about if you're interested in creating that additional stream of income and becoming a business owner. As per usual, I always bring you pristine guests. So today I am joined by Tesh Mbavu, who is a seasoned business person, a young business person who's literally even been featured on Forbes. So I'm very happy to have you here, Tish. I am not going to do you an injustice and introduce you because you've done so much that is so impressive. So maybe you can Thank start you. by telling us a bit about yourself and what you do. All right. Yeah. So, hey, guests, my name is Tesh Mbabu, as she said. Uh, I'm a serial technology entrepreneur. I've been running tech businesses over the last 11 years. Wow. So I've tried many things. Uh, some have failed, some have become quite successful. And yeah, excited to share my journey. Today, I'm co-founder and CEO at a company called Chapter. It's an African technology business that mm -hmm. focuses on powering merchants. So we give merchants technology to be able to take advantage of the social commerce boom, which mm -hmm. means today a lot of buying and selling is happening on social media platforms, Instagram, Facebook, yeah. TikTok. Yeah. Um, so we enable businesses to sell across all these platforms really easily, engage with their customers and convert more. So yeah. we say we help them make revenue even while asleep. Oh, amen to that. Yeah. Like making money in your sleep is the ultimate dream <laughs> for everyone. Yeah. Now you said you've been in business for like 11 years. I'm like, when did you start? Yeah, I was 19. So you, oh, wow. So you started business at 19. Can you tell us a bit about your journey? Because now I'm starting to even wonder, like, have you ever been employed? Have you ever like worked under someone? What is that? What, what made you get into business, into yeah. entrepreneurship, into even tech yeah. in the first place? Was tech your first um, was it your starting point or have you just kind of like grown and gotten into tech? Yeah, so I've always loved tech and my journey started one day when I was in Form 2. I can't believe <laughs> what is, I'm hearing. <laughs> this is in 2008. Yeah. It's an interesting story. I went home for midterm mm. and uh, my cousin introduced me to Facebook. Okay. And, you know, the process of setting up a Facebook account then needed you to create an email address. So I'd say that was my first deep interaction with the internet mm. and when I signed on and then got into Facebook and started connecting with my friends what really came to my mind was who built this and how can I build something similar yeah because I felt like the internet just created an opportunity for you to share or create something that can reach the world mm. so that's when I decided I have to learn what it takes yeah to build a technology business in so form two in form two I'm still so I, stuck there. <laughs> so I asked, like, what do you study? I wanted to be an architect Yeah. Uh, before then. Mm. But then from that day, I changed my mind. I was like, okay, people study computer science, software engineering mm. uh, to become tech entrepreneurs. Okay. So now I started studying and even chose courses that would lead me to study computer science. Mm. I ended up at the University of Nairobi. Uh, that's why I, I started computer science. Mm. And... I started my entrepreneurship journey immediately after high school, actually. So because I knew I wanted to go into tech, I started yeah. designing websites, graphic design. All this was self-taught. Do you uh, know what some of us were YouTube. doing after <laughs> high school? I'm, I'm actually embarrassed to even think about it. So where did you even get like, okay, this is how you build like a website? It is, or was it because you were so interested in technology that you kind yeah. of like started looking for information? Yeah, so I normally I have an attitude for like just be resourceful, mm. try and find what you need to step up to get ahead of the yeah. game. So in at that point, um, it meant studying mostly online. Mm. Uh, there's if you look at YouTube, for example, there's just information about anything and Google as well. Sure. So that was what I used to study, mm. and then 
I hoped my skills. <laughs> so I talked to you know my parents, their friends, in yeah. church. I would sell this idea that I can design your website. Mm. Uh, and I started getting clients. So I started earning some cash. Way before you've been joined uni. Yes. Yeah. Do you so. think that has set a foundation for you in terms of everything you've been able to achieve at this particular point? Do you think starting Ali is like a secret recipe that has gotten you where you are as fast as you have? Yeah, absolutely. I think a lot of people tell me you're so young, you know. You I'm, are. <laughs> I, I, when I look at my younger brothers, I don't feel like that. You but, feel older. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, but I do believe that you can't cheat time. Mm. Um, so I like to call it, and you've probably heard about the 10,000 hour rule. Yeah. I think um, people see where I am today and think it's an overnight success. Sure. But it took... 10 years of honing my skills. Mm. I've done nothing else, just yeah. tech, 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 tech for all that time. Mm. Uh, building businesses also for all that time so I can confidently talk about entrepreneurship mm. just because I've been through it. Like I've been through all the hardest days, the sleepless mm. nights, uh, the most joyous days when you start a business and you make your first shilling. Yeah, um, Yeah, it's taken It's taken time, mm. consistency, resilience, but most importantly, res resourcefulness. Mm. Um, just waking up and thinking, what do I need to achieve today? Yeah, uh, exactly. For this business to grow. Mm. If it means talking to a customer, it means opening an account. If mm. it means, you know, whatever it means, marketing, mm. you self-teach on the, on the go. Right. You literally are learning on the job. Yeah. We were speaking earlier today. Um, and I was telling you like part of my story and yeah. how I started my business. Yeah. And like for me, I was telling you it was just, uh, uh, it, it was serendipity, right? <laughs> it's yeah. like preparation, life experiences, luck, uh, yeah. COVID, all that kind of like just conspired and worked together. Yeah. And I was able to like start my coaching business because again, yeah. everyone was... Um, you know, at home because of COVID. Yeah. And now people are starting to pay attention to what's an emergency fund? How do I budget? How yeah. do I do this, that, and the other in terms of personal finances? Some of us were experiencing being laid off for the yeah. first time. Yeah. So when I now started creating content around financial literacy and financial yeah. planning, yeah. Um, and then also kind of like started offering services, yeah. it was almost like just, it, it was like right time, right product and yeah. everything else just kind of like the, the starting point wasn't as difficult right yeah. I've known you as a man to really take opportunity when it comes yeah. um, <laughs> because I have seen what you've been able to do with the different businesses that you've run yeah. and I've always been curious how do you identify opportunity because yeah. I feel like every day especially yeah. as young people in a digital world yeah. um Everything has, it, we're pretty much even, we call it now a digital village. Yeah. You don't even have to be in Uganda to know what's happening there yeah. or in Hong Kong to know what's happening there, right? Yeah. For you as a business person, because I know taking advantage of timing and yeah. opportunity yeah. has also contributed a bit to your success. Yes. How do you identify business opportunities around you? Yeah. Um, and what are the things someone should be on the lookout for? Like, what do you think has helped you with that? You know, that eye for yeah. there's an opportunity here. Yeah. Let me jump on it. <laughs> yeah, I think you partially answered it by yeah. that eye. Mm. So I think number one is just really being observant. Mm -hmm. Because business opportunities come from problems. Uh -huh. um, so you need to look around, look at the problems people are facing. Yeah, Think about how to make their lives easier. Mm. And in many times, many cases, uh, a business opportunity comes out of it. Mm. So in fact, I think the bigger challenge in this day and age, because there's so much information, as you said, yeah. is finding a problem that matters. Oof, because there's many yeah. problems, you know. There's many Are all problems. of them worth solving though? Yes, <laughs> they worth, worth solving. Yeah. Um, and one of the ways to answer that mm. is, as you think about, when you see an opportunity, ask yourself, how big can this get? Because mm. businesses take so much time, effort. Um, you, you're telling me yeah. your journey earlier. It takes so much effort to build a business. So is it worth 
you know, time it. and energy most likely it's going to be a five ten mm. sometimes even 20 year journey yeah trying to get where you need to go mm. um so it needs to be worth it Yeah, yeah yeah are there things you would tell um and especially because we are both like young people in our you know late 20s um early 30s that you know be on the lookout for this this is happening in the market like yeah. one of the things i know for a fact is digital is now huge yeah. right yeah. what are some opportunities you feel like we are sleeping on that you yeah. you think are just they're they're right below our noses and we are not taking advantage of them yeah so I'd say two things. Mm. One is social media. Mm. Um in my world I I I call it social commerce mm-hmm. because a lot of us look at Instagram and yeah. all these platforms mm. as a place to go and share what you're eating, who you're hanging out with. We are sorry. <laughs> I mean, I do I do the We're same sorry. thing. <laughs> I do the same thing. However, yeah. I I also like to look at the angle for mm. um all these are eyeballs, they are consumers wow. who are buying products and services every day. Sure. So I think something a lot of people might be sleeping on especially people who are looking for a job mm. and you might have been tarmacking mm. for months or yeah. years. Yet um you have this free tool. It's technically not free because you just need a phone and bundles. Yeah. But I think creating content it could be content around products. Mm. Uh so finding product people need yeah. and building a business mm. um some of the merchants we serve through chapter who use our platform mm. you know they sell all sorts of things from yeah. home decor to you know fashion mm. watches mm. shoes and they started with just you know one two three pieces created a page and today they're selling even 100 pieces a Can day. Can you imagine online? Yeah. Online. Yeah. On social media. They don't even have a website. They just yeah. have an Instagram page. Mm. So, it's not easy, but um it's it's a big opportunity to leverage social media to yeah. create a business. Mm. Uh I think the the other one that's a bit more technical, but everybody will have to um you know follow at some point. Mm. So you'd rather get started on it as early as possible mm. is AI. Mm-hmm. There's no ignoring it. There's no ignoring AI yeah. because it's it's going to affect all of us. There's sure. a lot of um jobs that AI is going to be able to do better than a human can mm. do. So how do you make sure you're uh you remain relevant as a person whether you're in business and the alignment because i feel like one of the things that a lot of i and i tell my clients this a lot that mm. acquiring demand driven skills never ends because yeah. our market is changing there's yeah. now there's a day and time i mean and i love that you've talked about social media because like i i have this running joke with my friends where i'm like there are people who are literally trolling um on social media every day and yeah. arguing on social media every day yeah. and there's a bunch of people making bank mm. every social. day on the same platform exactly. platform yeah. you know so it's like are you a creator or are you a consumer yeah. if you're just a consumer you'll never make money but you're putting money in people's pockets yes. every for every, every scroll every double you're tap product. you're the product <laughs> you know yeah. um and i i think that when i also started like running my business again and realized that instagram is a thing yeah not me getting into instagram strategy classes yeah Not me learning how to dance in front of a camera <laughs> tesh, and I can't dance. Because <laughs> I'm like, they're yeah. now saying reels are the way to go yeah. viral. So you learn. So I, 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 I think I'm very keen on telling people who are interested in getting in business yeah. that that ability to learn demand-driven skills. Like now, I've had to actually even figure out. So there's chat GPT. We can yeah. hate it. We can use it. Yeah. How do I incorporate that like in my business, for example? Um, there's, I mean, there's all... all these ai tools that are now coming up yeah. you you either bury your head yeah. under the sand so, and pretend it's not happening yeah. um i mean i've even met become irrelevant then you become irrelevant yeah. right so i love that you're mentioning that it's so important for me getting those demand driven skills so what's mm-hmm. the market looking like right now yes. and i feel like for a lot of us we've not realized that the learning process never ends yeah. today i'm learning yeah. dancing on tiktok, TikTok. tomorrow i'll start learning yeah. how to use ai and then yeah. the other day it's just yeah. a learning process like right who, who even thought tiktok would be the big thing today who even thought yeah. so yeah you could spend so much time um just thinking or in your comfort zone mm. and 
tomorrow it's not going to be TikTok. It's going to be something else. Yeah. So you need to reinvent yourself every day. Sure, sure. It's the only way. Yeah. yeah. And, and I know there's a lot of money to be made nowadays. I feel like I, I have seen it and I feel it yeah. that there's so much money to be made online. Yeah. And I love that even you as a business person, you've really, really taken advantage of yeah. tech. Yeah. And you've done quite well. What are some of the proudest moments that you've had as a business owner in your journey? Like the ones that you yeah. feel have just defined or made made this whole journey worth it for you? Yeah, that's a great question. I think a lot of the proudest moments for me have been in relation to either my customers mm -hmm. gaining a lot of value mm -hmm. from what we've built. Yeah. So them sharing the, the success mm -hmm. um, that is as a result of the platforms, the tech platforms we've yeah. built, because that's our niche. Um, and the other one is just seeing people grow. Mm. that is mostly my team mm. um, so being able to work with really young people and they move on to much better opportunities mm. whether it's jobs they're able to you know achieve some of their dreams I've seen some who've gone on to start their own companies well wow. raise funding and they tell me you know I learned a lot mm. about building mm. a business from scratch mm. you know from you um, yeah so just people yeah, seeing the impact seeing that the, your business yeah. has had. Yes. Okay, let's talk about challenges. Of course, it's not a walk in the park. Yeah. Um, what are some of the challenges you've experienced as someone who's run multiple businesses, yeah. built multiple businesses from scratch? Yeah. I don't know, have you experienced, um, you know, having to, um, you yeah. know, you've talked about people leaving. Yeah. And I remember the first time a team member left. Yeah. I wasn't as optimistic as you're <laughs> seated here sounding. I was like, <laughs> they have left me higher and dry right, like it's yeah. i think the whole process of hiring yeah. getting a, a, a good team it's it's such a headache for some people yeah. so i'd also like to maybe hear from you like in terms of on the ground real life challenges that you experience day to day as an entrepreneur that you've either figured out how to deal with or some that you're still figuring out what are some of the most prominent challenges yeah so um i think first of all just starting a business and see develop legs, hire people, and then become profitable yeah. or not. Just that journey by mm. itself is is a lot of challenges. Yeah. Um, I think initially I felt like you when you're trying to get that first second employee. Yeah. You feel like you've done so much with them. You and think that you deserve loyalty. <laughs> But then yeah. um, it's not meant to work like that. Everybody is meant to to grow. And no one will stay with you forever. No one is, exactly. <laughs> so yeah. there's, there's, um, there's been a lot of challenges, obviously, with team, managing mm. people. Mm. Uh, and sometimes you feel betrayed. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think yeah. we are honest enough about that most times yes. because it really yes. just feels like betrayal when someone leaves. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but then in hindsight, after mm. some time, you realize that's that's the journey of life. You know, mm. there's time to start and there's time for yeah. things to end. Mm. Uh, access to capital mm. also is difficult. That's a I big think. deal. Yeah, that's something people don't talk enough about. Yeah. Uh, but like if, if I could just stop fuel. you there, right? Yeah. How 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 have you gone about like that? Because everyone is like, I have this brilliant business idea, but yeah. I don't have money. Yeah. How have you gone about dealing with like capital and funding for the different businesses and the ventures that you've um, built? Yeah. So initially, you know, there's a big question. I feel like um, if you're looking for a job mm. and when you're looking for capital, yeah, it's the same thing. Like you're selling. You're selling something, you're selling yourself. Mm. So a lot of that is normally around how do you tell the story about you? You mentioned this earlier about, you know, your superpowers. What's unique about you? Mm. Why you? Mm -hmm. Because yes, there is capital and a lot of it, but whoever owns capital chooses and they choose based on, yeah. okay, do you have a brilliant idea? Yes, many mm -hmm. people have brilliant ideas. Mm. Uh, but more importantly, they look at the person they're backing. Mm -hmm. And that mostly entails your ability to communicate. Yeah. 
your story. Yeah. Why should I give you this money, especially for an unproved, um, unproven business? Yeah. Which idea. most new businesses mm. are unproven. Yeah. Yeah. So in that sense, mm. anyone giving you money expects. Mm. If I give you a dollar, I expect mm. you know one point two dollars or two dollars mm. back. Mm. So that person is not. We think the person is investing in the business, but most times they're investing in you. Uh huh. Yeah, so yeah. Uh, in that, like, you need to sell yourself. Mm, uh, that's mm. how I've gone about it. Mm. Just becoming, honing my skills around storytelling. Mm. And when you talk this, the way you pitch to a customer, you know, the way you pitch to an investor. Mm. A pitch to an investor needs to appeal to how they will get their money back. Yeah. Because right? I'm not running a charity. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's, that's their business. Mm. So... Um, you need to craft or adapt your story mm. to the audience. Yeah, um, that's something people don't know how to do well. Mm. Uh, because as entrepreneurs, we end, we we're normally very um, entangled to our product that's and how true. our product will change the world. Yeah, many cases. Yes, that's cool, but investors don't care about your product. They care about will they make making money. money. So exactly. Your story should be around like how big. Is the opportunity for them to make money. Yeah. Not how cool your product is. And I think that <laughs> that is so humbling. Let me tell you, yeah. when I started, I realized I had what most people will now call, I don't know whether you've experienced like that founder's syndrome mm -hmm. as you're talking, um, where it's like you yeah. feel so, you're so emotionally attached. In fact, to a point, yeah. even the way you take feedback is yeah. personal. Yeah. It's like you feel like it is a personal <laughs> attack <laughs> on you yeah. <laughs> when someone is telling you, um, your product is not, it's not sustainable. Mm -hmm. It's not scalable. Yeah. It is, um, I don't even see like when someone asks you to prove like how will this business still exist in the next five years? Yeah. And you're unable to like prove that you really feel um, it's like these people don't believe in me. Yes. And one of the things I've learned in my journey in business and I had to let it go was that feeling like I am I'm special. I'm unique. You're not you're not special. <laughs> it's so, so sad. Let me tell you something interesting. Like, yeah. People will see the millions of mm. shillings or dollars raised or yeah. invested in your business. Yeah. But what they don't know is that like for myself, mm. I have a less than 5% success rate when pitching. So you can imagine how Which many was? Noise. Yeah. So I've talked to like 400 investors. And only and one? 95% of them say no. So you can count like no, 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 no. You ask challenges like that's yeah. one of the biggest ones. Yeah. Is just and how does that, that not demoralize you? Yeah. So that's a challenge, right? But yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think that's one of the most important things you need. Mm. Um, balancing how you take feedback and yeah. those notes. Mm. Because on one side, you need conviction. You need to believe what you're building and everything. Mm. But also, you can't be drinking your Kool-Aid too much. You need That's also true. to listen. To what people to, are, to the feedback. feedback. Yeah. And sometimes that feedback is makes a lot of sense. Mm. And sometimes it doesn't. You should just ignore and yeah. continue. Yeah. Uh, but being able to differentiate the, those two things is is hard. Like your ego versus am I? Is it just my ego coming into play here, or is it that I am a believer and I'm resilient? I know what I'm doing is 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 actually exactly. going to work. Yeah. I love that you're bringing out the iceberg um, analogy of business. Yeah. You see, like in how in icebergs we see the tip of the iceberg, which is just five percent. Yeah. And that's what we're yeah. like, yay, yeah. this is such a successful <laughs> business person. Yeah. But then beneath the surface of the water is all those no's you're talking about. Yeah. I remember earlier during the day today, I was telling you like once a week, I must have a pep talk with myself yeah. about not quitting, <laughs> about not quitting my business. Yeah. And you see, people don't see that. Yeah. You go to my Instagram page, there's always content. Yeah. If you go to my YouTube, there's content you yes, know yes. the business is running the website is making sales yeah. but the business person is constantly discouraged yeah. they're constantly hearing no they're yeah. constantly trying to maybe let's say pursue a particular vision and it's just yeah. it's refusing to vision yes you know yes, so yes. how have you kept yourself resilient I, and I, I mean I'm, I'm actually mind blown at the fact that especially because I know you do a lot of like pitching and talking to investors what has kept you going all these years that you think we need to learn 
Yeah. Or other people need to implement. Yeah. Because I do know the reality is that when you hear too many no's, yeah. like 95% of them are no, very yeah. few people will still... Yeah. Like, I'll just, honestly, yeah. I'll polish up my CV and go apply for a job. Yeah, As in, yeah. I'm just, I'm dying, yeah? <laughs> yeah. So what, what's that thing that has kept you going even with all the no's and the challenges and all that? Yeah. So I think one point of clarification mm. is, yes, I have talked to many investors because capital is an important ingredient in your business. In your business. Whether you're looking at a bank or an investor or whatever it is. Mm. However, like, I spend more time in the business and building the business sure, than like 80, raising 90, funds. Than, than raising yeah. money because that's businesses need so many things. That's the other thing, mm. misconception. Businesses need so many things for them to work. Yeah. Um, so you can't afford as a founder to just say, you know, I'm good at marketing, especially early on. So you think marketing is what will make your business. You need to develop a product. Yeah. You need to hire people as yeah. recruitment. HR. You need to manage your finances. You so know, you're you the CFO, to... the cleaner, the marketer, the social exactly. media, the social media person. Yeah. When yeah. you're starting, you're pretty much everything. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And the better you can be at each of these components mm -hmm. than the next business person, especially mm. your competitor. Yeah. Then it just gives you an additional edge. Edge. Yeah. So mm. I. Yeah, I don't like this thing for somebody telling you, you know, oh, I'm not a tech person. Oh, I do, I'm not a marketer. Mm. You know, like the world doesn't care. If you're going to run a successful business, yeah. you need to be good at That's tough. everything. Yeah. Uh, if you're not good at it as a founder, get somebody who is, mm. get a co-founder, get a team. Yeah. Um, so super, super important. Mm, mm. I love that. When I started my business, I used to be those people. <laughs> my first job, yeah. um, my first ever job when I was actually in uni was a sales and marketing job yeah. that I hated, yeah. Tish. I hated <laughs> it. I don't even like thinking about it. Yeah. I think it was just the worst kind of first job to start, yeah? And then it was those ones for, like, you're selling a product. Actually, it was an insurance product, yeah. weirdly. Yeah. Um, and then you're getting paid on commission. Yeah. So you walk around Nairobi in offices. Some people will chase you away. Others will overpromise and yeah. never call you back. As a matter of fact, by the time you're calling for follow-up tomorrow, that number is blocked. <laughs> like they yeah. blocked you. Are you insurance? <laughs> yeah, what's your insurance? <laughs> we don't talk to them. Yeah. Um, so yeah. when now so. I started my business, one of the things I, I hated was sales. Yeah. But then you see, no matter how good your product or your service is, and you, you don't understand, you can't sell if you don't sell, yeah. right? So you, I mean, I, I, I used yeah. to feel, I don't want to be too salesy. Yeah. And then there's this thing. As an entrepreneur, you have to be shameless. You have to be shameless, you exactly. Be shameless. So yeah. I would even fear posting on my WhatsApp, because in my mind, I'm like, Aki, what, 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 <laughs> like you yeah. there's a shame i don't know why like when you yeah. talk too much about what you do when like let's say you sell t-shirts yeah. and and i keep like now that i know better yeah. i tell all my business coaching clients yeah. talk about your product every single day yeah. look at how um let's say people mm -hmm. if you're subscribed to like amazon or jumia how many times in a day do those people spam Richard, you yes. with messages yes. and promos yes but you're even, a now, even the biggest company in kenya even, will send you messages they will send your messages shamelessly, shamelessly you yeah, know so but i'm here i'm feeling we i don't want to post my mugs yeah. i don't want to post about my services because yeah. i'm thinking people will think i'm broke yeah? yeah so i had to really learn how to sell and how to stop being so uh, ashamed of sounding too salesy yeah. or like so i'm like every day i'm not on instagram to be famous yeah. i'm on instagram to make money, money. and for yeah. me to make money i have to sell, sell. you yes. know talk about your product talk about your product as yeah. much as possible wow yeah. this is sorry, so sorry i didn't answer the question yeah. mm. about resilience yeah yeah um and you've you've tapped into mm. that energy mm. for like you just have to keep pushing yeah and part of that involves shamelessness <laughs> i love you know, the way people, you're putting it yeah, because people will, <laughs> you, you're worried about what people will, will think, think yeah and everything um they normally say first they laugh at you then they want to be you yeah then they want to be you because just because you're shameless because um yeah early on in the journey people don't understand why would you what is this coaching thing you're doing 
It didn't make like, sense it to so make, many people. Like you had less than a thousand followers, you're there recording videos. People talking are to my relatives and my <laughs> exactly. and my friends from high <laughs> school. <laughs> and then funny thing, two years later, the same people will ask you, "How did you do it?" Yeah, like you were there. You you you, you saw, saw how I did, did it. it yeah, know, so. it's it was just so funny to you though. Then <laughs> exactly. it's it's so interesting. Now yeah. I want us to just go a notch higher. And talk about there's something I read about called the sunken cost fallacy, yeah, and yeah. it affects a lot of business people, yeah. where we do not know when it is time to call it quits, yeah. because you know right now we are just talking about it as if it's all roses and peaches, yeah. but I don't know if you've ever had to shut down a business, mm. if you've ever had to go back 10 steps behind. Yeah. Yeah. If you've ever just had, you see the sunken cost fallacy, in, uh, it rather insinuates that sometimes you've invested in a business. Yeah. You took a circle loan, you probably mm. have investor money, yeah. you got like a co-founder who also put money yeah. or however you raised money. But that money is now gone. The business is no longer working. It's not profitable. Yeah. It's no longer making sense. And you know what most of us do? <laughs> we take more loans to more. like try, yeah, we sink more money in the business. We're like, oh, maybe I just need a capital injection. Yeah, and yeah. I've spoken to people who've done like a first, a second, even a third, only for the business to behave the same way. So we are afraid of letting yeah. go because we are feeling, man, and the way I've invested so much. There's yeah. so much money sunk in here, so much investments. God forbid if you are running an actual physical office. Now you yeah. have offices, empty desks, you yeah. know, all of that. How have you maneuvered? I don't know. I'll, I'll just be very personal. Have you experienced like a failure of a business? Yeah. A closing down of a business? Yeah. And how do you know that it's time to let go? Honestly, like yeah. stop pushing it. It's yeah. time to let go. I've had two big failures actually. Yeah. Um, the first one was one of my first businesses. Mm -hmm. It was a... Uh, procurement automation platform. Mm. So basically what we're doing is automating the tendering process. Uh -huh. uh, I thought it was a fantastic idea mm. because why would people, you know, carry so much paperwork to go and submit a tender, yet you can just uh, fill a form online. Yeah. And, uh, that was the first time I learned about external risks in business. <laughs> I realized the person I was selling to didn't care about automation. It's not that the product wasn't good, mm. um, but I hadn't done enough research and hadn't talked to my users, my customers enough mm. to realize that they weren't willing to buy. Mm. So we did spend so much time building the product. Mm. And then, you know, the idea of build it and they will come because your idea is good instead of talking to customers yeah. first. Uh, that was a terrible failure. Mm. Uh, second is scaling a business that's not profitable. Mm. Mm. So we raised funding and then... Um, the business was growing mm. really, really well, uh -huh. but it was growing unprofitably and unsustainably. Yeah. But because we had cash in the bank mm. and we had investor pressure to grow, grow, mm. grow, we kept expanding a business mm. that is not profitable. Yeah. What does that mean? You're expanding losses. Yeah. So every month your losses are growing and growing. So as the business is growing, the losses it's are growing. growing. Yes. Yeah. So that was a big lesson. Mm. Never scale um, a business that's not profitable. Mm. Start small, figure it out, mm. create profitability. Yeah. Then replicate that. Then you're making yeah. more, more money. Yeah. Um, yeah. And even when you replicate, for example, you go to a new geography, mm. do the same thing. Start small. Whatever works in Kenya. May not work not in, in another, a, another country. Another country. Yeah. Another, cultures are different. Mm. Um, their ways of doing business are different. Mm. Uh, so that's that's another big lesson. Mm. But yeah, so I've experienced uh, many failures. Also, some of the big failures mm. where we had to, you know, you've scaled to a new market and then you realize, hey, this market isn't, mm -mm. you know, as I thought. It's not giving. You know, it's not giving <laughs> yeah. and you've spent uh, money on it. Mm. Uh, but then every other day you also experience failures. I like to say, um, as an entrepreneur, there are four kinds of days. Mm. And this happens again and again. There are really good days. There are two normal days. Mm. And then there are really bad days. Yeah. But even in the normal days, mm. you will, it's a roller coaster. Mm. Today, you could get a customer telling you, you know, they don't, they didn't appreciate your service for some reason. They want to pull out. Yeah. 
the same, the next meeting you go into, you've signed a new customer who's bigger than the one who left you. Yeah. You know, yeah. Uh, you go to the office, your employee hands you a resignation letter. You know, so it's just like... It's crazy. It's we crazy... should all have a support group for, <laughs> for entrepreneurs. 